where the league office and, and here's okay, let me say that if the league office is going to get involved, I think it needs to be minimal. I don't think they need to have uh their hands all dipped in, you know, the uh 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 the game and, and chiming in and, and saying, okay, this player's gone, this camera. Because one that sticks out to me was the whole Odell Beckham and uh Josh Norman back when uh Josh was playing for the Carolina Panthers. And Odell did ran a beeline and he actually used the crown of his helmet to to hit Josh Norman in the jaw on purpose. You know, I get something like that. But because the refs missed it. it, I mean, I don't know how they missed it, but they missed it. So if you need somebody like that to get somebody out of there, okay, I understand that. But it needs to be minimal. We don't need to hear from the league office. We're already hearing the, from the league office about catches. We already, you know, hearing about, you know, uh, 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 not. I shouldn't say the league office. It's supposed to be someone in the, the stands that's supposed to be noticing concussions, you know, and all this stuff. So we got enough involvement from the league. I think this right here, the players, I mean, the refs could handle this. They could take care of that. I think they've done a really good job in, in doing that, you know, for the most point. But I just really can't think of anything that just egregious that like the refs are, are missing, you know. Or maybe, you know, a, a, a first half. Maybe they could do that. Go through the first half. If something happened in the first half, then at halftime you can throw that person out. But I just don't want them getting involved right in the middle of a game. And then they, they stop the play. And then they start reviewing stuff. And then all of a sudden somebody in New York is saying, you know what? Get this person out of there. You know, I just don't know. So, uh We're going to cut off back, uh, football for a second. And we're going to get into some basketball. And I, and I was talking to you at the beginning of the show. You listened to the Wait a Minute show uh, with your man Jelani J.B. Bodie. And I said Stan Van Gundy might not be around in Detroit anymore. And there was a person that he might could get replaced with uh, this upcoming season. But there's three teams that I think – this person, this coach could end up being next year. And that one would be Mr. Shimmy Shake himself, Mark Jackson. I think it's time. John Gruden's been on the, you know, in the booth and he went to Oakland, got paid. I think it's time for Mark Jackson to really get back into the coaching scene. I know some people have said maybe it was the way his coaching style is and he rubbed people maybe the wrong way as far as like not just, you know, playing along. You know, he and that's kind of what the story was in Golden State is that they weren't seeing eye to eye, you know, on, on everything. But I don't think anyone questions. Mark Jackson's basketball mind. I think everyone respects him as a coach. I don't think there's anyone that will question him as a coach. So he he has a nice job, you know, calling games, but I think he's looking for the right situation. So there's three teams, you know, that, that I think he could end up with next year uh, when the season starts. And I talked about it, Detroit. He could be in Detroit. With Andre Drummond and and uh, Blake Griffin, I think that's something that he would entice him, and, and and maybe he'll look at it's like, okay, I'm not completely starting over. I got two guys that I can do uh, that I can get with, uh, and then put other pieces around it. So, and Stan Van Gundy, I, I it may be at this point. And he Stan Van, Stan Van Gundy maybe get a get an extra year because of the Blake Griffin trade, but they could still move on and, and just say, you know what, we appreciate that trade, but it's time to get new blood in here. He's been around, uh, maybe not gotten all the talent or all the results out of the talent that he's had. Uh, there's been stuff about him, you know, talking the ear off to the players. You know, at this point, and, and it seems like that's kind of Stan Van Gundy's thing, you know, where he when he goes somewhere. It, it seemed like it was that in Orlando. It seemed like it was that in Miami. 
And then it seems like they're talking about the same thing in Detroit, you know? Now, I'm not advocating for anyone to lose their job. I'm just saying what could possibly happen. If Mark Jackson said he wanted to come to Detroit, I think they probably would go ahead and push Stan Van Gundy out the door. Other team, obvious, this is obvious, New York Knicks. He should have been on the New York Knicks uh, as a coach years ago. Yeah, Phil Jackson should have hired him, but we all know because Mark would have came in there and be like, I ain't running no triangle offense. You done lost your mind. I'm going to run my offense and get on my page, and that's how we're going to do it. So Phil is not there anymore. He's gone. Uh, Jeff Hornacek is there. Uh, New York still struggling. They need to make a splash with the fans. We obviously know New York would love if Mark Jackson was there. But more importantly than anything, I don't know if Porzingis, I'm not going to say he hate Hornacek or anything like that, but I think if he knew Mark Jackson was coming and he was going to be the coach, that would put his him at ease. That would put his mind at ease that the Knicks are trying to do something to win. That would basically maybe buy yourself a couple years, two years, three years, or anything like that, and you could re-sign Porzingis and, and, and keep him around and build around that. You got a point guard there, uh, and, and Frank, uh, I'm going to torture his name, Nila Takina, if I said that right, uh, that I think Mark could help out with. He knows a little bit about point guards, you know. But I think that's just obvious. I mean, it, it should have happened a long time ago before all this this whole thing. You know, gets crazy. Uh, and the last, last team might be a surprise to people, but it wouldn't be a surprise to me, is that if he took over for Oklahoma City. I, uh, a lot of people have been talking about Billy Donovan, you know, getting out coach. They've been talking about Benny Do- Billy Donovan maybe not having the respects of NBA players because he didn't have NBA experience, you know talking about Billy Donovan not, you know, utilizing or I guess getting the best out of his players. I don't know about all that. I'm not going to say he's all those things. But again, if you are trying to keep Paul George there, I don't think Carmelo is going anywhere. And I think someone that, that, and don't take this the wrong way, that can step to Russ and Russ be like, okay, all right, all right. Mark Jackson is that guy. Three teams, Detroit, New York Knicks, and OKC. I think that's his short list of places that he would go. All of them got talent, some more than others. All of them got what you can build around. And all of them have a fan base that will be starving and that is starving for the old days. Detroit, obviously the old days, the Knicks back with you and them, the old days. OKC, we're going to throw Seattle in there uh, because that's where they were before they came to OKC. But we can also throw in the old days, you know, with James Harden, Russ and, and KD. That's what they looking for. You know, uh, so Mark Jackson, Mark Jackson, that's, I don't know if there's another team out there that, that would be ideal, you know, for him. In the Wait a Minute Show chat room, Angry Black Man is saying, Van Gundy is a great builder, but his message grates on, uh, grates on the player's nerves. And I think he may gets on the player's nerves, but in this case, the Pistons should hold off Fire him, give him a full year with Blake and Drummond. Mark Jackson has to be offered and take the Knicks job. Uh I those are valid points, Angry Black Man. So I I like I said, I said earlier, yeah, Stan will probably get another year because of that trade, just to see what he can do, you know, with it. I mean, that would be fair. I'm just saying if 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 Mark Jackson came calling uh and, and he wouldn't say hire me instead of Stan or anything, especially working with Jeff. But if the Piston were trying to get from understand, I think they would reach out to Mark Jackson, you know. Uh 
Angry Black Man also said Billy D. He might be talking about somebody else, but Billy. Oh, Billy Donovan will be safe as long as OKC makes the second round and goes uh, six or seven games. We would love Mark Jackson at Oklahoma City, but he's going to New York. Best roster is OKC, but he wants to return home. A hero's welcome in Madison Square Garden. I don't think second round. I don't think second round six or seven games help Billy Donovan, angry black man. And here's why. Uh, last year, Russ, he was a, he got them as a seven seed by himself, you know, uh, without another superstar. Now, of course, you know, they're doing a little bit better this year with two superstars. They're figuring it out. But I think Russell, you know, I think he ran out of gas, if you ask me. He was given so much. I just think he ran out of gas and he couldn't give him any more. And at the end of that series, you know, they couldn't get it from anyone else. So I think he could have got, if he had anything left, he probably could have got out of that first round just by himself. I think Billy D. If they are got if they got him on the bubble at this point and they're looking for some type of success, I think they are looking at albeit a Western Conference Finals for him to stay there. If if they're going to say, hey, your job is on the line. Because here's the thing, Angry Black Man, this is the biggest thing. They don't have time right now anymore to say, we'll get them next year. Because next year, Paul George could be gone. You know? So it has to be something where Western Conference Finals, and they'd be like, you know what, man? And if they went six or seven games with either Houston or Golden State, then they could say, you know what, man? We were almost there. We all we had them dudes. We just need to keep doing what we're doing and get a little bit better. But second round, I, 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 I'm not gonna be on that with you on that on there. You know. Uh, James and Matty, uh, Matty's boy said, if the Wizards flop in the playoffs, they should look into Fisdale or Jackson. Uh, Fizz, yeah, uh, Coach Fisdale will be out there as well uh, for people who wants to get uh, a new coach. Uh, and Washington could be a, a, a team. I just don't know if, if Mark Jackson would be interested. I think if, if it was between that and New York, I'm with Angry Black Man. I think he'll go to New York instead of Washington, D.C. You know, but DC is a, is an in, uh, interesting place uh, as well, you know. Um, and Angry Black makes a good point, JB, on Billy Donovan. Thank you. Uh, I think he's talking to me, but Mark Jackson needs to be coaching again. I mean, I love him as an analyst because he's Mama Dego's that man and all that stuff and all those sayings that he say, but. I need him back as a coach because I want to see him win a championship and then do the shimmy shake one more time. Because I think he said the only time he's going to bring out the shimmy shake is if he win a championship. And because Golden State won it without him, I didn't get to see the shimmy shake anymore. I used to love that from Mark Jackson, man. And if if you're if you're uh, 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 70 babies like me, then you know what I'm talking about. Mark Jackson go out there and drop that shimmy shake on him. So I want to see it again. But Mark Jackson, man, please, please. Please put this man in a uh, in a position. Just don't put him on no whack team, you know, that's trying to rebuild and everything. I, no, I don't think he's going to do that anyway. His job that he got right now is, is awesome, you know, and, and it's got to be the right situation. So uh, we're going to take another break, and then we're going to come back from the break and get back into some basketball news, but also finish this show up with some NFL news uh, about a catch rule. The catch! Yes, the catch rule is back, you know, in the business of – football again so you listen to the wait a minute show with your man jelani jb Bodie uh low pan uh can you take us to commercial Indeed. yes so we will be back after these words hey what's up everybody vince right the sports governor from the great state of minnesota join the rest of us sports zombies on two live studios radio that's right the boys are back doug Ryan and the rest of us, including me, the sports gov of Minnesota, Vince Wright, also known to the ladies as the Big Smooth. Keep it tuned here. That's right. Two live stews radio. All music artists, lend me your ear. 
Looking for that hot beat to make your next hit? Go to FarrellJarrowMusic.com. Tired of paying for over?